Well, good morning and welcome into worship. We're delighted to have you with us today. My name is David Willis, and it's my privilege to be the pastor here at Forest Park Church. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or watching online, we are delighted to have you uh, in worship with us today. We have purposely joined our minds and our hearts together to be here to worship the Lord Thank you for taking time out of your busy week to be with us today. In the sanctuary here, please be sure you fill out your connection card that's on the end of your bulletin. Remove that from the bulletin, fill it out, drop it, don't drop it in the offering plate. Take it by our information desk in the gathering area. We have a gift that we would love to share with you. If you're watching online and you would like a bulletin, feel free to click either of the links you see in the Facebook feed that will take you to two different places where you can download the bulletin. The exact same one that we have here in the sanctuary and uh, read along with us today keep up with the announcements etc in your bulletin today also on this communion Sunday is an insert that looks that here at Forest Park Church we have an open communion table that means irrespective of your faith background you are welcome here at this table that does not belong to us but indeed belongs to the Lord and we pray that you will feel free to join us for that this morning. We take just a couple of moments now to invite you to join us on Wednesday night for our Wednesday night dinner. This week we have stuffed bell peppers. If you want to participate in that, please be sure to sign up on that. If you ordered from the women's group a uh, smoked Boston butt, those are ready and ready to be picked up. Marianne, where are they? They're back in the kitchen. Back in the kitchen. So straight through hang a left you'll come to the kitchen you can pick that up there and have a big old eating tomorrow on Labor Day right it will be a beautiful beautiful time tomorrow as we all exhale and uh, just draw in fall now if you they're not it'll be here when like December January <laughs> But uh, we'll be glad for it whenever it gets here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your week to be with us here today. We're going to open now with a word of prayer. Bow with me. God, we love you and we thank you for this time that we have to come together to be with you. We sharpen ourselves today just as iron sharpens iron through the fellowship that we share with each other. We bring ourselves back in our soul as we sing songs that worship you today. Now, in everything that we offer to you, Father, may you be glorified, and may we find the revival that we need to make it through another week. Bless us and help us today to absorb what we need to be to be your church in this world, not within these walls, but outside these walls. Help us, Father worship together in Christ's name. Amen. In addition to tomorrow being Labor Day, it's also another uh, special day that we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna sing a, a special song to one of our friends this morning. Kenny Easton is gonna. He says he's turning 40 tomorrow. Uh, I I think it's. 
Okay. Well, I, he, so why don't we all sing happy birthday to Kenny? <laughs> brings us a lot of joy and we're, we're just so thrilled that he is a part of our, our hymn team because he's get laughter. he is our uh, I'm speechless and I'm supposed to sing. that's right he is our <laughs> prayer warrior and he's somebody who brings a lot of smiles to our faces if if you please stand we're gonna sing come Christian join and sing We continue our worship this morning as we bind our voices together once more and recite our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. Join me now. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'd like to ask Brother Michael Fontaine to come and share with us a reading from the Old Testament this morning. And as Michael is making his way up, I'll let you know that at the end of this month, the very last Sunday of this month, we are having our Refresh Sunday. We will meet Bayside at Papa Joe's for one service at 10 o'clock. I hope you'll join us there. We'll have the full church service and also be doing baptisms in the Bay. I uh, hope you can join us for that time of renewal and refreshing. Last Sunday of the month. Michael? morning. We're going to be reading this morning from the 23rd Psalm, the New International Version, in its entirety. It reads thusly. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Lord Pastor. Let's take time to pray once more. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, we look forward to that time. Even though we look forward to that time, we must admit that there's a lot of living to do until that comes to realization. As a matter of fact, we're called to live right up until that time. Whether you come back and split the eastern sky wide open and we meet you that way, or whether we are resurrected from the dead and we meet you until that time comes, let us dwell in the bodies of the living hope of Jesus Christ himself and bring your will to bear upon this earth. Let us live as those who are quite prepared to die because we know that even though we will pass through the valley of the shadow, we will never taste true death. For those who follow you, of Jesus himself, that we move from having to fear death to being able to truly live. So Lord, let us go forth now to live. Not just until we die, but live into the eternity that you have prepared before us. It is here that we will find our hope and you will walk beside us as you lead us through challenging times and through quiet times and we praise you for that let us fix our eyes upon that and no matter how bleak this world may seem to us let us be filled with the truth of that joy and father we seek today to bring that joy into the lives of those who are hurting and sick those who are ill of body mind and spirit and we ask father that you use us as your instruments to bring this to bear We pray, Father, for those who work now, that we may be safe while we worship. We remember those who wear the uniform of the United States military. Wherever they may be, whatever they may be doing, bless them and protect them. Bring them home safely to their families where they may know a sense of fulfillment, a sense of honor for their act of service Lord for those who would lead us we ask your blessing and protection for our country we ask for revival and restoration and father for us we pause now to take in the fullness of your presence as we unite our voices together and along with our voices, our hearts, and our spirits. As we remember and recite the way that you taught your disciples to pray when you told them to say this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We're going to sing a good old song you probably recognize called Revive Us Again. We're going to have the ladies sing the second verse and the men sing the third and then everybody else is going to sing first, fourth, and, and the refrain. that you open our minds and that you help us, Heavenly Father, to be living examples of your love, your grace, your peace, and your mercy. Through this time of worship, may we acknowledge who you are, may we put our trust in you and demonstrate for this world the example of service and servanthood that your son set for us. Let us trust you enough to give. Let us trust you enough to love the way that you talk. And let us serve according to that example. Bless the gift. Bless the giver that both may go into the world to serve you. We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated.
as is the norm for us here. A beautiful time in worship. Thank you very much to Chris and the hymn team, the voices, instrumentation, just a beautiful, beautiful time together. Thank you to you also for joining us. Again, whether you're here in the sanctuary or whether you are watching online, we are delighted by your presence today. How many of you took a psychology class in college? If you took a psychology, there you go. How many of you took more than one psychology class in college? Okay, so for me, I had psychology and then abnormal psychology. Um, and I can't tell you how much I resonated. That's not the right word. How much I recognized myself in the abnormal psychology class. It's amazing to me how um, people have made a living and a science out of trying to explain why we are so messed up as a species. But they have, and they've done so quite well. And there are many schools of psychology about the way that we act or why we act the way that we act. And, and one of the, the men that, that stuck with me, one of the names that I readily recognize and that I did find a lot of things that I recognize within his suggestion about why we are like we are, is a guy named Abraham Maslow. Uh, you might recognize what we call uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay, Maslow was in his heyday in the 40s and 50s, and he offered to us this basic pyramid of human needs. At the very bottom of that pyramid, the base of that pyramid, is our physiological needs. And his pyramid goes from physiological needs up to the point of psychological needs. For Maslow, we had the very most basic physiological needs. Those are the things that when you consider them and think about them, you understand and recognize why they are at the base of the pyramid. Those are things like food, water. Those are things like uh, uh, clothing and shelter. So that's a very good base for his pyramid and he says we climb that hierarchy of needs the more we move toward the psychological pinnacle of that as you would think a psychologist would next he says that there is a need for safety and control that, that we have this need as human beings for safety and control. And that's the next step. Then he says the next step is, well, hang on, I'm going to share that with you. But above that middle step is esteem and self-worth. As you can see, we're getting from the most base needs to the most advanced psychological needs. He says that, that we have a need for self-esteem and self-worth. We need to be able to realize and actualize who we are, which brings us to the top or the pinnacle of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is indeed self-actualization, that personal growth, living into the potential that we have. But in the middle of that pyramid, the thing that binds bottom and top together the thing that holds together the pyramid at all, the thing that keeps it balanced, is a need for love and belonging. In the middle, in the midst of everything that we have as a physiological need, all the way up to the most advanced psychological needs, in the middle of that is a sense of love and belonging, and that comes through our interaction with other people. That comes through how we relate to other people. But sometimes, as human beings, we can feel like we are unwanted. We can feel like we are unloved. And as we draw to a close this sermon series on dealing with feelings, how it is that we navigate negative human emotions through faith, 
we stop with this one. How do we deal with feeling unwanted? How do we tap into our faith and survive this feeling of being unwanted or unloved? The thing that, according to Abraham Maslow, holds his whole hierarchy, hierarchy together. How is it that we can deal with that? I want to read you today from the Gospel of Luke. The truth-telling of a story of a man that Jesus found in the tombs. Certainly one that was feeling unwanted. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 8. We're going to be reading through uh, verses 26 through 39. Luke chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. And we see that verse 26 starts out like this. They sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. They being Jesus and his disciples. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. And for a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him. And though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demons into solitary places. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission And when the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to see Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and he left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him away saying this. Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. From the most basic physical needs to the most advanced psychological needs, we as human beings are complex. And when you isolate us, negative things begin to happen. I've often wondered, if we're having so much difficulty in our prisons today, if there's so much violence within our prisons, why don't we subdivide the prison cells into small spaces and just isolate the people who are sentenced to prison? And the answer comes fairly quickly. Because when you isolate someone, then negative things with no turnaround begin to happen. One of my favorite movies is quite simply focused on isolation. It is the Tom Hanks movie named Castaway. In the movie Castaway, what we find is that Tom Cruise's or mm, mm, Tom Hanks's character gets Uh, wrecked and isolated on a desert island. He is truly a castaway. And he lives that way for years. And we get an inside glimpse of the psychological effect that isolation can have on an individual. Friends, if you don't realize this this morning, let me state to you this truth. 
Satan does his best to isolate you and me. He realizes that in isolation, he has an upper hand in the life of a human being. If he can isolate you and me from other people, if he can isolate you especially as a Christ follower from other Christ followers, you will begin to absorb that which you're exposed to. And if you have little to no exposure to anything else, you will begin to absorb your own thoughts and look like those own thoughts. That's why scripture says this, that we need to think on what is true and what is lovely and what is right because our thoughts are so powerful but when left alone when isolated we will begin to have the feeling of being unwanted we will begin to give in to the feeling that we are unloved and that nobody cares about us and that's a difficult place for anyone to be whether they are a Christ follower or not. We tend to think that we are the sum total of our thoughts. We begin to believe that we are uh, none better than the worst we believe about ourselves. Jesus ran across a man at Gerasenes who fit this bill, isolated and alone. He lived sans clothing in the only place where he could experience true silence, in and amongst the dead. I have to believe that in his heart he felt like he was dead, so why should he not live amongst the dead? He's dead inside, why not live like I am dead? I feel like he said within his heart, for me and for you, feelings of being unwanted, feelings of being unloved are actual and very real. Verse 29 tells us this, the demon had driven him into solitary places. We tend to get overcome by what Jesus saw when he got there. A wild man nobody wanted to be around who had isolated himself in the tombs. And we forget the isolation and the solitary places where the demon had driven him. Here's the beautiful thing, though, friends, about the God that we serve. It doesn't matter how isolated we may feel. It doesn't matter how alone we tend to make ourselves it doesn't matter how by ourselves we sometimes uh, push ourselves. God, the one that we serve, the one true living God, meets you there. The Psalms remind us that there's nowhere that we can go that he doesn't realize where we are. From the highest highs to the deepest depths he is there not only does God meet you there God desire desires to work with you there so what do we do when we find ourselves alone when we find ourselves unwanted when we find ourselves unloved how do we lean into our faith to escape that uh, desperate human feeling for me and for you, you have to be found. Okay? You have to be found. When I look back at Holy Scripture, particularly in the story that we shared today, verse 28 tells us when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell to his feet, shouting at the top of his voice. And we realize this was the demon working through the man. Yet, and still the man was found. What are you doing to be found? Not by other people, if you're feeling isolated, unwanted, and unloved. What are you doing to be found by God? 
Are you seeking to engage him? As he reaches out to you, are you seeking to feel his presence? Are you able and willing to see what he's doing around you? And as we've already discussed during this sermon series, it doesn't have to be something that's miraculous. It can be something that that we take as mundane, the sunrise, the sunset, the wind on our face, those things that we take for granted. Are you willing to see God in those things? We've already discovered that he may not be in the earthquake, right? We've already discovered that he may not be in the driving force of the wind. We've already discovered that he might not be in the roaring fire. But he will be found in the still, small whisper of a breeze. Are you willing to be found? In this feeling of isolation and feeling of being unwanted and unloved, you have to also be active and be passive. You have to be active and you have to be passive. Let me explain to you what I mean. You have to be you. But you also have to let God be God. You have to live into your humanness. But you also have to be willing to allow God to be God. What does that look like? For me, I get a very good picture of what that looks like in the scripture that we shared this morning when we see the stark difference in the man from when Jesus found him to when he left him. The picture is very real. He was without clothes living in a graveyard when he was found. When Jesus left him, he was of sane mind, solid body, dressed and in his right mind and Jesus gives him a call you go and you tell what God has done for you for me and for you being active and being passive might look like this being active might mean that we truly take a good hard look at ourself In my isolation, what have I become? How's my how's my personal hygiene? Okay? And 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 it may be this am I brushing my teeth every day? Am I showering? Am I using deodorant? Am I isolated because I choose to isolate myself and in that isolation have I made myself unattractive to other human beings? Well, aren't human beings supposed to not judge me? Yeah, we're we're not supposed to judge. But the problem is, is this. If you're making yourself unlovely of a, a conscious decision, you might need to be active in restoring and recentering that part of your life has my attitude become so poor so self-centered am I so crotchety and mean and off-putting that people don't want to be around me it can happen right it can happen I believe that there are people who were born with a lousy attitude. Because when I encounter them, and when they encounter me at a certain age, there's no way that happened overnight. They've been working on that for some period of time. Okay? And I always seem to encounter them on 23rd Street, right? (laughs) In traffic. In all of this, There are things that we need to be active about, but also there are things that we need to be passive about. And when I say be passive, what I mean is this, let God be God. And oh, that may be the hardest thing. To step back and say, God, I can't do anything about this. Please work 
on me, in me, to heal me of this. Even in the midst of being active and controlling those things you can control, to break out of isolation and the feelings of being unwanted and unloved, there is that portion of it that can make you and me crazy. And that's generally that part that has to do with being passive. You know why? Because being passive violates that second level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that need for control. When we have to let go of that control, we lose focus and we begin to wonder what it is that God is doing. Indeed, God, are you doing anything at all? And for me, as we close out, perhaps for you as well, we get that beautiful ending and this realization that this entire region rejected Jesus Christ. This entire region rejected him. Go away, you frighten us. And then there's that one bright spot, that, that star for us who are isolated, who feel unwanted and unloved. Jesus says to the man, return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. And then you realize that Jesus was content to come to that region for just one person. We get so caught up in the fact that an entire region of a country, of a place, rejects Jesus that we forget this simple truth that Jesus was satisfied just to leave there with one person who had acknowledged who he is and who had responded to him. And if you're alone, if you're isolated, if you're feeling unwanted and you're feeling unloved, that is a great dawning of realization because the same God who was satisfied to come there and save him, one man in amongst probably thousands of people, is the same God that's willing to come and meet you and save you and be with you and minister to you even uh, amongst thousands of of people. This is the God who desires relationship. This is the God who we worship. This is the God who led his disciples bravely into Jerusalem for that last time to die your death and my death for the sins that we have committed so that we might know right relationship with him. And that is what we celebrate as we come to the communion table, a God who through his own sacrifice has sought to remind us that we are indeed wanted, not unwanted, and that we are indeed loved, not unloved. So we celebrate that as we come to the communion table today and we are reminded of the depth of love, the amazing love that God has for us. Bow with me. But help us to realize the depth and the truth of love that you have for us. Grant us peace. Grant us mercy as we prepare to come to your table. In Christ's name, amen. If you will take your insert, it looks like this. Read along with me. Pretty self-explanatory. I read those words that are in regular typeface. You read those together out loud. Those words that are in bold typeface. Let us begin. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God.
hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us pray in silence. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Now pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And the whole church said, Amen. Friends, I'm going to invite you to line up along the outside walls of the church. And as you come this morning to the altar rail, please know that if you would like to kneel at the altar and partake of the elements, you can. But if you're unable to or you simply don't want to kneel, that's fine as well. You'll come, you'll kneel, you'll take the elements and I will direct you when to partake of the bread and when to partake of the juice. Then I'll have a prayer and you can rise and return to your seats up the center aisle. Now, if you want to be, uh, want to participate in communion this morning, but you can't move from where you are, just remain seated and slip your hand up as we end the service and we'll be happy to bring those elements to you where you are sitting. So I invite you now to line up along the outside walls Come and fill the altar rails as we prepare to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Now take and eat. Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you. Now take and drink. Let us pray. Loving God, as we rise, let us be strong in rising. As we kneel, let us find the strength and revival in kneeling. 
Whatever we do, let us do this to serve you. Encourage us now as we seek to do that in Christ's name. Amen. You may fill the altar again. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Now take and eat. Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you. Now take and drink. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we kneel here today, let us feel the power of the Holy Spirit come to life once again within our heart. Revive us, we pray, that we might continue to be your voice, your hands, your feet, your action in this world. Encourage us to do that each day through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In your name and for your glory, amen. You may fill the altar again. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Now take and eat. Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you. Now take and drink. Let us pray. Whether eating or drinking, whether rising up or lying down, let us remember, Father, that you are our purpose. Let us adopt that purpose and live it in this place that the world may come to know you as we do. We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. You may fill the altar again. Jesus said, this is my body, broken for you, now take and eat. Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you, now take and drink. Let us pray. Loving God, in the taking of these elements, let us be reminded of the wonderful gift that has been given to us in and amongst all of these things. May you be honored, may you be glorified, and may we offer to the world the hope of knowing a risen Savior. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.
Friends, we uh, thank you so much for being with us on this Labor Day weekend. We're going to close out now with song. We invite you to stand together as we do just that. If you did not get enough time at the altar, it is open once again, and we invite you to come forward and kneel here today. Stand together as we close out worship today in song. in my name and because you believe others will know that I live let this be your marching orders as we depart this church today do so with the blessing of God falling upon you may his countenance rest upon your shoulders may his love and his face shine brightly upon you and may you share this with the world but not alone with the love of God with the peace of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit moving you forward in his name and for his glory, amen. Thank you for coming. wonderful week.